Hi, I'm Emily from Life So Savory, and today I'm going to show you one of my very favorite sewing tutorials. It's a super easy one, too, and a great beginner project. If you can sew a straight line, you can make this easy rag quilt. So here's a finished one, and you can see on the top, I have all these cute, fuzzy, rag, frayed edges. And then on the back of the quilt, the squares are just flat. So that's the style. It's meant to be that way. And this quilt is great because the more you wash it and the more you use it, the softer and cozier it gets. So let's talk about how you create this. You need to cut squares of flannel and squares of quilt batting. And I've cut a bunch here to get started. Depending on how big you want your quilt will depend on how many squares you need to cut and how much batting you need. You'll need to do a little bit of math to figure it out before you go shopping for your fabric and before you cut your fabric. I've cut 10 inch squares, which means my batting squares are eight inches. And what you want is a one inch seam allowance on all sides of the batting. So if I'm going to have eight inch finished squares, you would add up how many of those squares you want across and how many of those squares you want going down to figure out the size of your quilt. So just draw it out on paper and do a little bit of figuring um, to get started. So with my 10 inch squares, they will be eight inch finished, which is what you have here on this quilt. You can also make strips of fabric. You could make much smaller squares. The possibilities are really endless once you get down the basic idea of this. If this is your first rig quilt, I would suggest making the 10 inch squares like I'm showing just because it's nice and easy and the sewing goes fast. So to assemble our squares, we make batting sandwiches. At least that's what I like to call them. You're gonna take one layer of flannel, put the batting in the middle with your seam allowance around it, then take the other layer of flannel and put the design up. The right side of the fabric should be facing out on both sides of your square because these are going to be both showing. You can make different designs by creating sandwiches with different fabrics or you can make them the same and put the same fabric on each square. Once you have your square sewn, you can create quilt designs or you can determine it before you start by laying it all out on paper and then creating the squares that will match that design. I've done it both ways. This one was a bit more random and I just used the same fabric on the top and the bottom to make it a little bit easier to make my design. All right, so I've already assembled these two. I like to just place one pin in the center of each square to hold it all together before I begin sewing. Now we're gonna do some chain stitching where we sew all of these sort of in one continuous thread before we cut them apart. And this makes the whole process go a lot faster and I'll show you how to do it. So let's go over to the sewing machine and begin chaining these squares together. Now, if I was making a whole quilt, I would have a very large stack of flannel squares here, but today I'm just gonna demonstrate with a little two by two or four square quilt. And we wanna start by sewing diagonal across each line of fabric. So we have our two layers of fabric and we're just going to sew diagonally across. Now I've been asked, how do I make sure that my line is straight? And the answer is, I really don't. I don't worry that my diagonal is perfectly straight as I sew across because no one's ever going to see it. But you do wanna make sure that when you come off the fabric, you're again at the point on the other side of the diagonal. Now here's what I talked about with chain stitching. We're simply going to sew off one and on to another. And by doing this process, we can really sew many squares in a short amount of time. So we're gonna go all the way across all of them. And once you do this a few times, it will get faster. And you can do as many as you want in a chain before you cut it. If the stack is long and you're making 50 of them, it might not really be reasonable to have a stack of 50 coming off your machine. But if you're just doing a few or a smaller quilt, you could probably do all of them before you stop and cut your thread. And you don't have to worry about back stitching because all of these seams will be enclosed in other stitching. All right, so now we're going to cut it, lift our presser foot, and now we have our four squares here chained together and we wanna clip them apart so we can sew the other side of the diagonal cross. 
you probably want to use either thread that is really contrasting so that you can see it or really coordinating so that you hardly see it at all. Both of these will look great and be a nice look for your crossed quilt. All right, so here we go again, crossing the other side of the X and sewing the opposite diagonal, doing the same thing where I am chaining them all together. If this really bothers you and you wanna make sure that you have an exact cross on your fabric, you could use a fabric marking pen to create this X on your fabric before you sew. I've made many of these and never marked my fabric and it's never bothered me that the cross is maybe slightly not straight, but I know for some of you that that is a sticking point. So go ahead and mark with fabric if you want before you sew to make sure your X is exact. All right, so again, we're doing this on all of our squares. It doesn't really matter if you're sewing on the top or the bottom of what the quilt will be. Either side of the square will both have a cross showing. And you would continue to do this until you have all the squares of your quilt complete. Once you have all the squares complete, we'll head back and begin our quilt layout. And we are going to cut them apart and then put them back together. So at this point, you do wanna decide what your quilt design is going to be. So we're gonna do a simple little four square here with different designs and patterns, and then the reverse will be on the other side. Now, you will want to assemble in rows and then put the rows together. So to do that, I would sew this row together, and you wanna pinch up the one inch seam allowance and then put a couple of pins to hold it in place. Now we also want to make sure that we pinch up the seam allowance going the same direction on all of our pieces. So if these are going to be the top of my quilt. I want to make sure that the seam allowance is pinched up, up and not down on all the rows of my quilt. So I would assemble all the rows like this and then I would sew those rows together. So let's with a one inch seam allowance, sew these squares together. And again, this machine has a nice one inch marking to help me determine where that one inch is and keep me sewing along. You shouldn't really be sewing through the batting. You should just be sewing through four layers of flannel. It doesn't really matter if you do sew through the batting, but just to be aware that it won't really be part of what you're sewing. Okay, and we'll do the other one, lining it up on the one inch mark. If your machine doesn't happen to have a one inch mark, because we're doing so much one inch sewing, you might wanna put a piece of tape or a mark on your machine, which will just make the sewing that much easier if you have that marked for all your sewing lines. Okay. So now you're going to put the rows together. So with a larger quilt, we'd have to lay this out on a table, or sometimes I even have to do this on my floor to get this all laid out nicely. But you'll take your rows, and again, you pinch the seam allowance up, going the same direction, and then you're going to put a few pins. Now, when you come to these center crosses with these thick seam allowances, you wanna fold them open and even across. So I usually like to start pinning where the crosses come together to try to have neat corners. I'm not really a quilter, so I don't have perfect corners when I am quilting, but that's one way that will help me get a little bit straighter and a little bit closer to having those lined up is by starting on one corner and working my way out. So if this was longer rows, of course, you would have more than the four squares, but this will give you the general idea. So now we're going to sew again across and then we'll be able to show you the fun clipping part, which makes this so cozy and warm. When I was looking for fabric for this project, I came across some beautiful Christmas fabric, which is what my example um, is on the table, and it's become my kids' brand new favorite couch quilt. So this not only can be a baby gift, which I've gifted many, many, many of them, but it also could be a fun lap quilt or a cozy winter blanket that you keep around the house.
And there are many layers of flannel that you're sewing here. So depending on your machine and its power, you may have to go a little bit slower than others, but you'll be able to sew across if you just go slow. So now we have what would be our completed quilt. And you can see on this one how the edge is also frayed. In order to do that, you will, you will want to sew a one inch seam all the way across your quilt or all the way around your quilt. And you're just gonna do that by stitching one inch from the edge of the fabric so that you can go ahead and clip around and that edge won't fray. But since this isn't really finished and I'm probably gonna add on to this, I'm not gonna clip that or sew that this time. But I will show you how I clip um, the inner part of this. Now, the most important thing is probably to find some entertainment while you do this because it's going to take you a while. Um, but I like to do this when I'm watching a movie or um, having a good conversation with my kids. But you're gonna grab some really sharp scissors and you're gonna cut half inch strips of flannel. And you should be able to cut through all four layers, but if you can't, you could divide it up. And the most important thing is to make sure that you don't cut through those stitches. If you do, you're gonna have to take this back to the machine, which I totally have before, and just reinforce that seam so your stitches don't pop open and your quilt come apart. This is time consuming. It will take you a good chunk of time if you have a twin quilt or even a crib quilt, but you're gonna clip all of these seam allowances that you created. But just kind of work your way around and cut those seam allowances into about half inch markings. Again, I'm not measuring, I'm just es estimating my half inch. Um, but you're gonna go ahead and do the whole quilt and the whole border, unless you would wanna put a binding or some other quilt finish on it. And then you're gonna wash it and dry it at least two times. So I wash it, dry it, wash it, dry it. It leaves a mess of flannel pieces everywhere. But once you've cleaned that up, you have the gorgeous result of your finished frayed flannel quilt.